Good morning, everybody. Hey, let's give a big hand to our worship team, the job they do every week to prepare. That was awesome. Love that song. Well, you can be seated, and it's a great to have you with us here this morning. I'd like to extend a big hello to those who are watching online. I know we have people that are watching from across the United States and perhaps even other countries. And I want to just encourage you to, uh, those of you that are watching lo- online, uh, send us a little note on the web and let us know where you're watching from. You know, it's, I've always kind of wondered how many people are watching from Antarctica. So uh, you Antarctica people, make sure you let us know as well, all right? Okay, let's take a second and pray as we get started here this morning. God, we just want to thank you so much for this day, and we thank you for this time that we have together this morning. Today we're talking about a subject that is really hard to live out, that love is patient. And uh, we just pray, God, that you will speak to each and every one of us to take a look at our own lives and uh, where we can grow and, and change with your help. And we just turn this time over to you today and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we have a very special treat for you guys today. We are actually going to play Name That Tune, all right? And let's give a big hand to Sandra Lee and Dave Ennis. All right, this is a lot of fun. I kind of feel like I'm up here at a variety show. You know, kind of going back to my roots. Okay, here's how we're going to play this game. I'm going to sing. Wonderful Dave is going to play for me. And when I stop and I point at y'all, y'all are going to finish the line, if you know it, okay? Which I think you will probably know these, but... And I need, since you guys don't have a mic and I do, I need you to sing really loud. Okay? Here we go. Song number one. Unforgettable In every way know your music, you know, because that's how we roll around here. Let's see if you know this one. We've only just begun to leave white lace and promises. said, gosh, I wish Kurt would have given me some prizes or something so I could pick the best one. You guys are doing great so far. This is kind of, oh yeah. I'm going to add the dance to this one. <laughs> you are the sunshine of my life, yeah. That's why I'll always be around. Mm -hmm. You are the apple of my eye. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, now this one's going to age me a little bit because I actually sang this in high school. Love, love will keep us together. Think of me, babe, whenever some sweet-talking girl comes along singing a song. Don't mess 
mess around You just gotta be strong and stop Okay, those of you who knew that really well, you all are with me in high school. Huh? I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. You get your thing. God forbid love ever leave you empty-handed I hope you still feel smart when you stand beside the ocean Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens Promise me that you'll get faith a fighting chance Let's give a big hand to Sandra and Dave. You guys really sound good out there. I love that. We need to get the mics out in the audience, too. Hey, um, all of these songs actually kind of correlate to a point that we're going to make here. And uh, we've got a couple, couple things that they tie in with. First clue is there is an event that's happening tonight. It's an award show. Anybody have an idea what that is? The Grammys, that's right. All of these songs uh, that they just played for us were San or Grammy Song of the Year nominees. All right? The other thing they have in common is they all have to do with love. All right? So if you happen to get both of those things right, you will be the proud winner of your very own gathering pencil. All right? <laughs> if you don't have one already with you, be sure to stop one by as a complimentary gift from the gathering for answering those questions. I know, it's exciting, isn't it? You didn't, I bet you didn't know that you were going to win something when you came to church today, did you? Well, today we're continuing our series called All We Need Is Love, and love is a, a beautiful thing, isn't it? It's wonderful, it's exciting when the, the butterflies are there, when your heart races, whenever he or she walks into the room. There's ne nothing better than being in love and of having people in your life to love. And you know, it would be great if we could just go through life always on cloud nine. But the problem is that life isn't like that, is it? Sometimes showing love to people can be really hard. I mean, what if that person lets us down or is acting like a jerk? Okay? What, or what if we are in a bad mood or having kind of a, a crappy day? Can we all agree that sometimes showing love to another person, even somebody that we truly care about, can be really, really hard sometimes? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 has been commonly referred to as the love chapter. And you know, as I was reading through this chapter a few weeks ago, it, it just really hit home to me where I started thinking about myself and and it really becoming convicted because this stuff is not easy to do. It really is not. And I was seeing where I was really falling short in a lot of these areas in, in my life. Let's check out this passage, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 5. It says, If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and I, if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained 
nothing. Now check this out. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. And you know, when I need a reality check in my life, you know, I read those verses and I put my name in there and I ask myself, is that true of me? You know, Kurt is patient, Kurt is kind, Kurt is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude, Kurt does not demand his own way, Kurt is not irritable, and Kurt keeps no record of being wronged. And you know, that is really almost impossible to do on my own. You know, sometimes we can get it right for a little while, but I would say it is impossible to be living that out without God's help. But thankfully, God's help is available for each of us. And today we're going to focus on this one. Love is patient. Now, I don't know about you, but I am generally not a very patient person. Now, I'd, I'd like to be patient. Sometimes people tell me, wow, you were really patient. You know, and of course I say, well, thank you and, and God bless you. You know, you are very patient too. And we just kind of pat each other on the back and make each other feel good about ourselves. Now, I think that all of us can be patient in, in certain things. Like, I can be very patient when I'm doing something fun. You know what I'm saying? Okay, that's not too hard. How about you? We can be patient when we're doing something fun. That's a piece of cake. But here's my dreaded three, okay? And that's another story. Number three is waiting at the DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles. Oh, that just about kills me, okay? Number two is driving in traffic when I'm in a big hurry. And wouldn't you know it, this week as I was working on this message in the last seven, eight days or so, about three times I got caught up in a, tra- in a traffic jam when I was in a big hurry. And it's like God was telling me something. You know, you need to learn something here. And then number one for me, I'd have to say, is waiting at the doctor's office. Oh, man, that just, that, that just gets me. Now, answer me this. Why do they call people who wait or go to the doctor patients? Okay? Patient is the last word I would associate with being at a doctor's office. I, I know, it's kind of like this... Maybe they have this subliminal message they're trying to send to us, you know, we will call you patients in the hope that we will actually become patient. Well, let me tell you, it's just not working, okay? That idea is not working too well, if you ask me. But you know, what I've come to see about myself, and I see this in other people too, is when I usually am most impatient is when I get caught up in my own stuff, thinking about me, feeling rushed, and typically not really taking time in that moment to talk with God about what I'm dealing with. And when life gets hectic, I tend to not be patient. But the cool thing with God is it's never too late to change and to grow. And so here's a a key point to remember that helps me and may help you as well, and that's to try to foster an environment and a lifestyle in which Patience can flourish. Because doing things the same old way just isn't working. Would you agree with that? Okay, this is something that we all, I think all of us need in our lives. So how, how do we do that? Well, patience comes when I value the worth of others. So point number one I want to cover today is patience comes when I value the worth of others. When I'm not just caught up in my own stuff, but I appreciate and I truly value the other person. Now, ladies, if you could just hang tight for a second, I need to talk to the guys for just a moment. Now, you, uh, you guys that are, that are here today, I, I need to apologize to you. I'm actually going to be showing a couple scenes from a chick flick today. I know, I know, but, you know, it is the, it is the weekend before Valentine's Day, and, uh, you know, and those, those of you that are married, you know, you probably have been exposed to a chick flick at one time or another. You might have actually seen an entire chick flick before. And, you know, you single guys, girls love guys that'll watch, you know, they're romantic. Let's put it that way, all right? So here's, here's a point for you to take some time today, go on your Facebook page and say, I watched The Notebook. Matter of fact, you can get out your phone, do it right now. Let everybody know that you watched The Notebook and the girls will go crazy about that, all right? So that's a free one for you. So are we cool? All right, okay. 
All right. Hello. Let me ask you ladies, how many would you say that The Notebook is one of your favorite movies? All right. So you single guys, you see this going on here? Okay, I'm telling you. In the movie The Notebook, Noah and Allie are falling for each other. And Noah shares his dream of his dream house. And as Allie chimes in, he values her and her input for that dream. Let's watch the scene. Okay. Windsor Plantation. Oh. They built it in 1772. Rumor has it that Francis Marion mm -hmm. proposed to his wife right here on these, uh, these steps. Oh. Shut Be careful. This is broken. Look at that. <laughs> this. <laughs> Yeah, a gigantic piece of crap. <laughs> it is. But I'm gonna buy it one day. I'm gonna fix it up. All it needs is a new floor. And new walls and roof. Is that all? And plumbing and electric. And furniture. Yeah, and some furniture. But it's right on the water. And there's a big old barn up there. I could turn that into my workshop. Well, what about me? Now, don't I get any say in this? Do you want to say in this? Yes, I would. What do you want? I want a white house with blue shutters mm -hmm. and a room overlooking the river so I can paint. Anything else? Yes. I want a big old porch that wraps around the entire house. And oh. we can drink tea and watch the sun go down. Okay. You promise? Mm -hmm. I promise. You know, it's human nature to think of me first, to put our own wishes and our own desires above others. But the Bible shows us another way, a better way. And when we value other people, love can flourish. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2, beginning in verse 3, it says, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. So Jesus set the ultimate example for all of us. He values us so much that he willingly gave his life for us. And if I want to show love to others, I need to value their worth. So, so how do we value their worth? Here's, here's a few ideas. We pray. We pray for them. We pray with them. We find ways to honor them when we're talking to other people about them and things that are going on in their life. When we're talking to the kids, friends, we respect them, their ideas, their uniqueness. We give them our time and our attention. Show them that they're important to you. So we value the worth of others. Number two is to respect others' differences. Respect Others' differences. Now, the fact is, not everybody thinks like we do and acts like we do. And if you're married, you know that very, very well. Now, when it comes to the issue of toilet paper rolls, okay? 
Now, as a woman, you might be an overroller, okay? And you've always been an overroller. Your parents were overrollers. Their parents were overrollers. And it goes back for generation upon generation upon generation for all time. You've been overrollers, okay? But there's just this little problem. You happen to marry this guy, and somehow through the dating process, you didn't happen to find out, and it actually didn't get covered in the wedding vows either, (laughs) that this guy is an underroller. Oh, yeah. And his parents were underrollers, and their parents were underrollers, and their parents were underrollers for generation upon generation upon generation for all time. Now, can an overroller and an underroller coexist? Is that even possible? Well, the good thing is, with God, all things are possible, okay? So there is some hope. But what we have to do sometimes is just kind of take a step back, breathe deeply, relax a little bit, and learn to enjoy and celebrate their uniqueness, even if they are kind of a little bit weird, okay? Now, we all have differences, And we all make mistakes, too. None of us is perfect. And where we can express love through patience is when we can see that and just relax and and not get too uptight about things, particularly about the little things. How much better could our relationships be if we lived out this next verse? Let's read this aloud together. Ephesians 4, verse 2. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. You see, it's our love that gives us the right perspective to help us to deal with the imperfections or differences in others. And sometimes for me and for us type A's, and maybe for you as well, I need to take a look in the mirror and admit I am not perfect and just kind of mellow out a little bit. You know, I honestly don't have to make a big deal out of most things. I don't. It's learning to appreciate people for who they are and really celebrating how God has uniquely made them. And I, for one, am sure glad that God loves me unconditionally, even with all my shortcomings. So it's respect others' differences. The third point I want to cover this morning is patience comes when I love through listening. When I love through listening. Proverbs 12, 15 says, Fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. And the fact is, we live in a hectic, fast-paced society, but one of the real problems with that is we tend to get in too big of a hurry to listen, don't we? We have short attention spans and we pack our days with so, much things, so many things to do and so much stuff to think about. I've done it and so have you. But it comes back to, to fostering an environment in which love and patience can flourish. Now, how many of you would say that you are serial sentence finishers? Okay, you know what I'm talking about? You're having a conversation with somebody and you very quickly figure out the end of this story. But of course, the person needs to cover all of the details, emphasis on the word all, okay? And it's just driving you crazy. You can't, it's like you can't take it, and so you have to blurt out and say what the end of the story is. You know, it's, it just has to come out. Have you done that? Okay, yeah, me too. All right, I admit it. But think for a minute. What would our lives be like if we could just take time to slow down a little bit, okay, and to enjoy the journey of life? When everything is not so hectic and fast-paced and crazy, and we could actually relax and enjoy life and enjoy the people in our lives without thinking ahead about what I need to be doing next and what's on my agenda, One of the very best ways that we can show love to another person is to take the time to genuinely listen to them. Because when you think about it, at the heart of that, it's saying, I care enough about you that I'm going to set aside all this other stuff that's going on in my life and focus on you. 
because I love you and I care about you and you are my priority. So ask yourself the question, am I an engaged listener? Okay, and I'm not talking about a TV remote control listener that watches, that listens during the commercials, okay? But an engaged listener. Love the other person through listening. And ultimately, it comes down to our priorities, and that's point number four. Patience comes when I focus on what matters most. Patience comes when I focus on what matters most. Now, after being apart for several years, Noah never gives up on the dream that he and Allie shared. Let's watch a scene from The Notebook. They're different. What do you mean? the way you look everything you look different too but in a good way (laughs) now you're kind of the same though yeah yeah and you really did it what everything the house It's beautiful what you did. Well, I promised you I would. Great. We gotta go. Regardless of wherever you're at in your marriage or whatever relationship we may be talking about, the good thing is, is it's never too late to start for you. There's so much stuff that we can get caught up with in this life, a lot of things that are competing for our time and our attention. But in the whole scope of things, when it's all said and done, what is most important? What is truly most important? And you know, the good thing is Jesus answers that for us. Look at this verse in your outline, Matthew 22, verse 37. Jesus says, you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. 
Now, you know what that says to me? It says, God needs to be my priority. And if I don't have time for God in my life, then my life is messed up. Okay? God is the one who is going to be my source. The one who will help me to be loving and patient and caring towards other people. Because the fact is, I need his help. And so do you. But not only that, but if I don't have time for people, it could be a spouse, for my kids, for my parents, for my friends, for my neighbors, for people, then my life is out of whack. Okay? Plan time to remove the busyness, to take time to relax and have time for people. Because, you know, at the end of the day, it's not how much money we made or how nice of a home we owned or how nice of a car we drove or what all of our accomplishments in life are. What truly matters is did we love God and did we love others? And as 1 Corinthians 13 shows us, the proof is in our actions. So here are some questions for reflection for the coming week. And I, I just want to encourage you to take some time and pray about these and to think about it. First of all, is what are my major priorities in life? Think about what's important to me. What are my main priorities? And then second, does my life reflect my priorities? Does my lifestyle, how I'm living it out, accurately reflect really what's important to me? And then finally, what one thing can I change about my routine or lifestyle starting this week to help me show more patience towards those I love? I want to encourage you to take some time to do that and ask God for his help to help you to love through patience. Thank you all for coming this morning. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.